Well, folks, the Pope is holding a synod, which is basically a gathering where they talk over the issues. And as always, he's pushing a left-leaning agenda. Yesterday, according to the New York Times, the Vatican Assembly put the church's most sensitive issues on the table. They are they're ha- holding a synod. And this synod is basically, they get together and they discuss really controversial issues. The issues under discussion will include priestly celibacy, married priests, the blessing of gay couples, the extension of sacraments to the divorce, and the ordination of female deacons. Detractors are wary of the nature of the assembly, known as a synod. They've criticized it as a bureaucratic talkathon or as an insidious Trojan horse for progressives to erode the church's traditions under the cloak of collegiality. Supporters see a chance to put into practice the post bottom up view of the church as an inclusive institution. It's an amazing moment, said Renee Cola Ryan, the dean of the School of Philosophy and Theology at University of Notre Dame, Australia, who will be the voting participant in the meeting, one of the first women ever to do so. Many of the issues are contentious. So apparently the, the, the this rolls out kind of slowly and in secret. With that said, there are a bunch of, of people who have been invited who are very far to the left. The Reverend James Martin, a Jesuit priest and advocate for LGBTQ Catholics, was personally invited by Pope Francis to participate. Helena Jepson Spuler, who works for the Swiss Catholic Lenten Fund, a Catholic relief agency, will participate. She said the church would require change to survive, adding she would pragmatically argue for women to be ordained as deacons as a first step to becoming priests and bishops. So, again, this is really controversial stuff. The Vatican released a response dated September 25th, written in Spanish, bearing Francis' signature, that seemed to reverse a 2021 Vatican note that came down hard against the blessing of gay unions. On Monday, five of the church's most conservative cardinals made public a letter they had sent to Francis asking for a clarification of his thinking on these issues. In Francis' new letter, he clearly upheld the church position that marriage only exists between a man and a woman, but he added that priests should exercise, quote, pastoral charity when it came to requests for blessings. Instead of acting as naysaying judges or following new protocols, Priests should be open to channels beyond beyond norms and the possibility there are forms of benediction requested by one or more persons that do not transmit a mistaken conception of marriage. What the hell does that mean? I don't even understand. How do you issue a blessing for an act that is barred by scripture? I don't. What, what exactly would that look like? I bless you and hope that you guys have a happy life together is in, is in fact an endorsement of an, of an action that the church considers sinful. So I, I don't know how you split this baby. The fact is that Pope Francis' position on these issues feels a lot like Barack Obama's position on these issues circa about 2008. Right? He, was, he was against gay marriage, totally against gay marriage. Oh, yeah, by the way, kind of not against gay marriage. That, that's what it feels like from Pope Francis, obviously. And you wonder why there's so many conservative Catholics who are unhappy with the guy. This would be the reason. It turns out, obviously, this is not merely an issue within the Catholic community. Andy Stanley, the senior pastor of North Point Ministries, a non-denominational evangelical church. It's, very, it's like a big mega church across Georgia. And um, he held a uh, he held some sort of session recently in which he was speaking about LGBTQ issues. And once again, the idea here is Christianity softening its message as to what is sinful and what is not sinful, what is allowed and what is not allowed in order to make people feel better about themselves while under while basically underselling the actual scriptural position on the issue. Now, again, you don't have to believe that this stuff is sinful. No one's asking you to. However, to say that the church or that the Bible says go ahead with this activity or that core identity lies in sexual sin is a direct repudiation of religious thought. Religious thought says that what you are in the end is a servant of God. You don't always meet that standard. Sometimes you fall short of that standard. We all fall short of that standard sometimes, but it doesn't mean the standard ain't the standard. And it doesn't mean that you should tie up your identity in violation of the standard. Once you do that, you're no longer a religious person. You can be a religious person who sins. That's every religious person. Or you can be a person who identifies your very nature with the sin, which is in essence a way of saying that that the situate that the rules should not apply to you because your identity is now in conflict with the rules. We have a lot on our schedules, especially as parents right now. Soccer practice, science fairs, prepping for the holidays. The good news is you can take a big thing off your plate. You can put great meat on your plate with Good Ranchers. Now again, Good Ranchers makes amazing, amazing cuts of steak. They really do. I mean, they got me a kosher steak one time. Incredible steak. You care about what your family eats. So does Good Ranchers. That's why they've spent years building relationships with local farms to source the best 100% American beef, chicken, pork, and now wild-caught seafood as well. The best of the land and sea now can get conveniently delivered to your door. Right now, they're offering two years of free ground beef to anyone who subscribes. That is a $480 value. That's two years of free, high-quality ground beef and a locked-in price. No other meat company guarantees you 100% American beef and locked-in price. That's because no one else is Good Ranchers. So save. 
on your beef, chicken, pork, lock in your price today. Every single steakhouse quality cut is individually wrapped and flash frozen to make mealtime simple. Act fast. The deal is ending really soon. Go to GoodRanchers.com today. Use my code Ben for 25 bucks off and free ground brief for two years. Remember, subscribe to any box to lock in your price on America's best meat for two whole years as well. That is GoodRanchers.com today. Use my code Ben for 500 bucks in savings. Subscribe to Good Ranchers American Meat Delivered. The medical establishment has been disregarding the lives of innocent kids for decades now. Many have grown callous because it seems surreal to think that over 64 million babies have been lost in the pandemic of abortion. Preborn will not stand silent, and we shouldn't either. We can't stand by and let babies die at the hands of abortionists. That's why preborn exists, to stand up for those who can't defend themselves. The only defense for these precious babies is their heartbeat. That begins at just three weeks. It can be heard on ultrasound by five weeks. When a mom making that ultimate choice hears her baby's heartbeat and sees the precious life inside her, the majority of the time, she is going to choose life. By sponsoring an ultrasound for mom, you are being the voice of the preborn. So please join preborn in the cause for life for just 28 bucks. You can be the difference between the life and death of a child. To donate, dial pound 250, say keyword baby. That is pound 250 baby or go to preborn.com slash Ben. That is preborn.com slash Ben. Go check them out right now. They're doing amazing work. Again, ultrasounds make a world of difference for mom. All of a sudden, she can meet her child before the child is born. That changes her perspective on the entire issue. Go to preborn.com slash Ben. Again, that's preborn.com slash Ben. So Andy Stanley gave a speech the other day. It's become very controversial. Here's some of what he had to say. They prayed for that and God didn't answer their prayer. Many are convinced that traditional marriage is not an option for them. So they commit to living a chaste life, an old-fashioned word. And for many men and men, women who put their faith in Christ, they just decide, okay, I'm just going to buckle down. I'm just going to bear down. I'm just going to be by myself. I'm not going to have family. I'm going to be sexually pure. And many, 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 many do that for long seasons of time. And some, for some, it's, it's, it's their whole life. But for many, that is not sustainable. And so they choose a same-sex marriage. Not because they're convinced it's biblical. They read the same Bible. They chose to marry for the same reason many of us do. Love, companionship, and family. Okay, nobody is suggesting that when gay people, when when two men marry each other, that they are doing so out of some sort of misguided desire for hedonism. But to equate that to traditional marriage or to say that they're still not engaging in what would be scripturally sinful activity is a violation of the standard, obviously. Is is same-sex marriage better than same-sex promiscuity? Sure, because marriage or any sort of monogamy is going to be better than promiscuity. Does that mean that it's even in the same ballpark? morally or or religiously speaking, with traditional marriage, which is about the production and creation of children and the building of family units? Uh, of course not. And so I don't, I don't know what, what exactly he's trying to prove here. He continues along these lines. It's their decision. Our decision is to decide how we respond to their decision. Our decision as a group of local churches is how are we going to respond to their decision. And we decided 28 years ago, we draw circles, we don't draw lines. We draw big circles. If someone desires to follow Jesus, regardless of their starting point, regardless of their past, regardless of their current circumstances, our message is come and see and come sit with me. Okay, well, that, that's totally fine, except for what that requires is the, com- is the community to say, okay, and now you're going to be admitted as a married couple. That is not what is required. Because in any religion, take my own religion as an example, because I know it better than Christianity, obviously. If you walk into the synagogue on Saturday or on Shabbat and you have a cell phone, nobody's asking that you leave. If, however, you say, I am a cell phone carrier, this is my identity, I'm going to use my cell phone. And in fact, it is up to all of you guys you need to acknowledge that my use of a cell phone is morally legitimate on the Sabbath. Don't come to shul. Right? Don't, don't come to synagogue. People sin, they make mistakes all the time. As long as you acknowledge the standard, it's not a threat to the community standard. The threat to the community standard comes when you force any institution to change its standards for you and your standard of behavior. By the way, this this happens all the time in the Jewish community. In Sephardi communities, it's very common to see guys walk in to shul on Saturday and they've got the cell phone in their pocket and no one bats an eye. Would those guys pick up the cell phone in the middle of the service and start talking and then ask that everybody, you know, give them space? No, that's not a thing they would do. 
Respect for the standard is not the same thing as keeping the standard. But the problem is that our religious leaders are now blurring that distinction because they think it's too much to ask people to admit their own sin, which, of course, is the entire purpose of religion. The entire purpose of religion is to say, I acknowledge the standard, even if I'm not fully capable of meeting it all the time. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda.